Welcome to Q&A with SNA. I'm Andrea. And I'm Shane. And together we have uh, a special guest with us today, Tony. Uh, Tony, I'm going to let you introduce yourself and what you do. Uh, Tony is one of our team members, but I'll throw it over to Tony and he can tell us more about himself. Thanks, Andrea. Um, my name's Tony Hammond. I'm the finance manager for Aintree Group. I joined just over a year ago, joined the team at Aintree and love it. Love it. I love... Um, what we do and how we help our clients. Um, I've been in the finance industry for 24 years mm -hmm. um, and I've been in pretty much every role within the industry, management, teller, mobile lender, uh, but I, I reckon I've really found my place now uh -huh. um, at Aintree. It's really good. And what? so what is your role within Aintree? So finance manager, what does that entail? Um, all aspects of lending. So mm -hmm. it could be um, a simple refinance for a residential client. It can be company restructure. It can be working capital release. So I do anything and everything. Um, it could be a straightforward PAYG lend or it can be a company lend. It can be equipment finance. It can be self-managed super fund lending. You name it, I do it. Because mm -hmm. my theory at Aintree Group is if I'm presented with a request, I should be able to say yes each and every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes it's not as easy as just a simple. <laughs> Some have yes, challenges. Though, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try not to talk too much about individual client circumstances because poor Tony has been thrown at the deep end with Aintree Group and um, what we've thrown at him. So I think he's. Pro you've probably learned a bit um, about how an accounting firm works from a finance perspective Absolutely. as well since he started. So. Yeah, yeah. I've found that um, particularly in Shane's instance, <laughs> they are often challenging clients <laughs> and I've got a deal for you, Tony. The thing is, <laughs> um, what's the thing? Um, <laughs> There's always a thing. It's the thing that makes me, it challenges me, but that's part of the reward is, is thinking outside the box and creating a solution from nothing. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Mm -hmm. So when you started with us, uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about, I'll, I'll just give a bit of background for the listeners who don't know who Tony is, but, um, if you want to know more about Tony, listen to his podcast episodes on Plant Grow Reap because he is excellent at what he does. But when we decided to set up a finance division in Aintree Group, we um, spoke to a chap who said, I think I know somebody who might be the right person for Aintree Group. And within 24 hours, basically, we had interviewed Tony and had um, offered him a job. So how, what was that like? Like what, how did that go compared to your previous experiences of like well um in the past it had been you, you go through a round of interviews um and there's psychological psychometric <laughs> testing and all of that yeah um i think after speaking to the fellow that connected us mm -hmm. it, it was meeting you guys in the boardroom and i just felt like it was the right fit mm -hmm. because you both think the same way I do. You st you have the same focus when it comes to a customer and the customer experience. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt like I was at home, mm -hmm. you know. And although I, after a good interview, you go, oh, I think I might have got the job. <laughs> I started the following Monday, <laughs> mm, which was, uh, I don't know, not a shock, but a real uh, investment in me and, and, um, and the level of trust that we have. Um, right from the get go is something I've never experienced. Yeah. So we do all the psychometric testing and everything. We just do it in our own brains between <laughs> each other. So um, we've always kind of thought that when we um, do an interview, the most important part of a person is the person. It's not, you know, how well they do on a test or anything like that. It's just mm. more of a how the rapport works and, yeah. and whether it feels like a good fit. And yeah. I think um, that's how quickly it was. And I think it's also a testament to Andrew Group in general that we can go from, you know, one day having an interview with someone and then, you know, a couple of days later actually having them sit at a desk and have things. I don't think we had like a computer or anything maybe on that first day, but no. um, there was probably a chair. Maybe you sat at the kitchen table for a little while or something. But That didn't have a computer. <laughs> didn't have a desk. Um, didn't know who anyone was. No. But it was thrilled to be there. And I knew it was. Good. there's a process and a procedure yeah. that we yeah. followed yeah. and within a day or two we're up and running. Yeah. 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 Now, in terms of 
the service that you offer for our clients. So we've got a number of banks on our panel. So we deal with how many how many banks are on on the panel or finance? I so should say including finance. Including yes. asset, equipment, finance, commercial, residential, SMS lending, and things like that. We've got up to I think it's last count was fifty right. members on the panel. Yeah. Um, some have particular niches that we're a, a straight go to. Mm -hmm. Some are in the mix as, as far as competition goes. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a requirement to present multiple choices to our clients. So mm. at a bare minimum, you have to be accredited with 20 mm -hmm. and we're more than double that. Mm -hmm. um, I like that diversity. I like that choice that we can offer our clients. And we're always looking for a lender that's innovative, that is fast to respond mm -hmm. and has a decent product offering. And we're always looking for something like mm. that. So, And the key thing with that is that cheapest is not always the best. Not always the best at no. all. Um, it's cheap for a reason. Is it cheap for a reason because they're still paper-based and expect you to fill out an application form and fax it to them? <laughs> and they... Sorry, what's that? A fax? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I had God. to figure out how our computer, our printer yeah, actually yeah. does fax. Hmm. Um, it's cheap for a reason and not necessarily in the best interest of the client. Mm -hmm. So when you weigh it up, um, having not necessarily, I mean, there's extraordinary high rates, but they're high rates for a reason. They're mm. risk-based lenders. So they're mm -hmm. looking at um, credit defaults and things like that. But for the most part, um, and to date, I haven't been challenged on why is it so high, mm -hmm. the interest rate, just get me something that I know I'm going to be happy with, whether mm -hmm. it's um, a good environmental uh, footprint mm -hmm. or a focus, or it could be good online um, yeah. access, mm -hmm. clarity and, and um, a streamlined sort of process is generally what people are looking for these days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't want to sit in front of an application form, fill out who, how many dependents they got, what their living expense. If they can do it electronically, yeah. it saves everyone some time. Mm. Yeah. And in terms of the last 12 months, we've been dealing with quite a number of client matters um, and some have been challenging, haven't they? Well, they definitely have been. Yeah. Um, I've had instances where um, the client is a perfect candidate for lending, um, but the loan is either A, too complicated for the lender um, because we don't just do straightforward lending, mm. too complicated for the lender or just too big mm. for the lender. So they fit within their policy, mm. but the lender won't say, well, we, we won't do it. It's not within our risk appetite or they simply don't respond to you at all. Mm. Um, I have clients that don't fully disclose um, that they've got a number of dependents or underestimate their cost of living mm. expense. Uh, I've got a family of um, husband and wife and four kids, but we spend $50 a month on groceries. Now we're, we're going to have a discussion around that. <laughs> yes. um, I haven't done my tax for the last two years. Who's your accountant? I don't have one. Well, you're in an accounting firm, so I think <laughs> we need to help you there. Mm. Um, or we've got ATO debt. I mean, everyone lives their life their way. So mm. Mm. you've just got to be adaptable. And that's why the number of lenders we have um, is important um, to be able to say, well, most mainstream lenders won't touch this because of A, B or C. Mm. But I've got a lender that won't even do assessments on your affordability. Mm. Let's go there. Yeah. Um, it's a bit outrageous to, to even think that we can do that, but, mm. um, you've got to be adaptable to, to the challenges that are faced. Yeah. And not here to, um, slander banks or anything like that far from it, mm. but, um, dealing with the banking sector, um, is a challenge at the moment. It, yes, it is. Um, it's response times that I find challenging. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I've got a client need... Um, they're paying too much on their current mortgage. It's a straightforward lend, but because there's five companies involved, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot more scrutiny around all of those five companies and the three trusts or whatever it is. Yeah. And the person working on your file decides he's going to move banks and doesn't <laughs> hand over the file. And a couple of months go past and you wonder what, what's going on. Yeah. Um, when was it, someone going to tell us? Yeah. yeah. Um, those, that sort of thing. Or you promise something and it's not delivered. Now, as you say, Shane, it's not about bank bashing at all, but we're heavily, like our client focus is second to none. So in my uh, space, if I uh, deliver less than 
uh, what is expected from a client experience perspective, it, it, it comes or reflects back on the group as a whole. Mm. Yeah. And I expect that from the lender as well. I need them to be as responsive as we are. And mm -hmm. sometimes, sadly, that's not the case. Yeah. 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 Um, I understand that, you know, uh, let's just pick on bank ABC or Acme Bank or whatever you might call it. They don't have, in the time where they're, they're um, releasing really good rates, there's a lot more lending goes their way. Mm. They don't put more credit managers on. They simply can't. Yeah, yeah. So response times are slower. Um, and we've got to be adaptable to that. Yeah. So yeah. we need to, um, and I especially need to keep the client updated as often as we can, um, even if there's no news to provide. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they know we haven't forgotten about them. Yeah. 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 So let's wind the clock back before Ancient Group. So you've been in the sector for 24 years, I think yeah, you said. Yeah. What led you to joining the banking finance sector? Um, prior to this, I was... Um, in audio engineering. So I did something like this. I, I was doing okay. a podcast. So <laughs> yeah. I was doing um, live band gigs and mixing mm -hmm. and things like that. And it was underpaid and long hours. You're the first person to arrive, the last person yeah. to leave. And I thought there must be something else out there. And I started um, as a part-time teller in Geelong, mm -hmm. like everyone back in the day did. This was when pension day was still a thing. <laughs> Do you remember Pension Day? <laughs> yes. Um, you would have every Thursday. It was every every yeah, Thursday, it was Thursday, Thursday. I'm pretty sure yeah, it was a yeah. Thursday because yeah. we used to go to Camberwell for lunch and okay. I would meet at Camberwell <laughs> for lunch um, because we both worked sort of equidistant. And you knew it was Pension Day because the Camberwell car park – Oh yeah, the pensioners Bedlam. were in the Campbell <laughs> car park. They they would sit up with their deck chairs yeah, out the yeah, front yeah. from about eight o'clock in the morning. Because they would go to the bank. On their pension worry day. is that yeah, yeah. Um, if I don't draw out my pension on pension day, the government will assume I don't need it. Yeah. So let's do <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. I was astounded, um, but they were lovely to deal with. Yeah. And, and yeah. you would have the old phrase, "Hardly working, uh, working hard, hardly working," that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. gradually, banks move those people away from passport yeah. uh, passbooks. Yeah. Um, yeah. And people bank online. Yeah. I started at the Commonwealth Bank, and I was identified as someone who had, I guess, talent. So they'd throw challenges at me. Uh -huh. From a teller, I went full time because they needed me. Um, I was called um, into a role where I sold insurance over the phone. Not by client leads by any means. Uh, you were given um, the white pages and you were told <laughs> oh, really? to do A wow. to Z. Really? Start oh at A, gosh. end at wow. Z. Hi, my name's Tony. Would you like an in uh, And this is before regulation came yeah. in and yes. stopped you from doing that. But that was a tough gig. Oh, I um, imagine. And it bought me out of my shell. And yeah. I think that was the aim. And I went from there to mobile banking and found that lending was really um, where I sell, found myself as happy as I am mm -hmm. now. And that is because you change people's lives, yeah. typically for the better, mm -hmm. or you come in and rescue a situation. Yeah. Um, it's always fraught with challenges and it's always learning to do. But it's such a rewarding career. Mm -hmm. it's such mm -hmm. a great industry to work in. Yeah, and there's been a lot of change in that time, as you said. Regulation has got more stringent. Oh yeah. Um, between those days of insurance, yeah, just cold calling. Yeah, yeah. Um, even just walking into a bank with your yeah. your passbook, and they'd stamp it and handwrite the number yeah. in there. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And you would um, put the pension money in the passbook. Yeah. And you would give it back to them, and if it was a man, he would put the passbook in his top <laughs> pocket, yeah. cash hanging out of it, yeah. and walk yeah. down the street with it. Yeah. yeah. I was astounded. Yeah. 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 We have seen a lot of changes and I think they are for the better because um, mm -hmm. we are more focused on doing the best thing for our clients, acting in their best interest, yeah. offering them choice. And the regulation, if you work within it, um, everyone benefits Yeah. in my mind. And do you see it with the number of lenders that we deal with, do you see that it is a competitive market and we're getting better products and better outcomes for our clients? For the most part, I, I'd say that's correct. Um, the challenge we face now is um, we would talk about um, how the big banks um, operate um, and how many banks they own. Mm. Um, so if you're part of the Westpac group, for example, mm -hmm. they own a number of banks. So um, are they giving you choice? Well, you'll find that the credit policy and the rate is the same across the board. Mm -hmm. 
when you go to someone who's a, like a second tier lender, the rate might be a little bit better, might be a little bit worse, but their policy is a little bit better yeah. or a little bit worse. Um, and there are lenders out there that do not want any more lending mm -hmm. um, for the moment, for whatever reason, yeah. saying, um, and I won't name the bank, um, but there is a bank out there that said, uh, we're closed our book to brokers. Mm -hmm. We're only dealing with first party. So that's mm -hmm. the bank itself originating its own loans. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, um, that happens from time to time. Yeah. Um, it does offer choice having um, a vast spread of lenders. Um, we've just got to find the one that is suitable for that client particularly. Yeah. 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 And why should someone go to a broker as opposed to going to the bank directly? It's a great question. Um, a broker offers you choice, in my case, 50 different lenders. Mm -hmm. um, you'll get that... Um, I think level of service that is is hard to compare with the majors in as far as um, the level of advice you would give, mm -hmm. um, the level of attention you would have uh, when you're talking about a particular lending solution. If you go into a bank, you'll have to make an appointment. You'll have to see someone who, who is suitably qualified to deal with that lending quer query in, mm -hmm. in a case of multiple companies, multiple trusts. Yeah. You better hope... Mm that that person has been in the industry a while and hasn't just been put in the position because yeah. um, they showed some talent and they've been in the industry mm. for six mm. months and they're proud of that and good on them. Um, but are they qualified? Mm. Yeah. And does that particular bank branch have an on-site lender? Because mm. quite often they don't. They're only there one day a week or you have to go to a, a major branch um, that has – business banking and all of that sort of attached to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think uh, the major driver for, for most people is that I'm going to offer them the choice um, mm -hmm. and really act in their best interest about, yes, I mean, it's not always about the rate, but we can give you um, a comparison and make you um, or give you the opportunity to make that informed choice. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're going to bank A, B or C, you get a choice of their one or two products. Yeah. That's it. It's fixed. It's variable. It's principal and interest or interest only. That's mm. your choice. Mm. Mm. That's your only choice. Mm. Yeah. And we have much more to offer. Yeah. Yeah. I think from our client's perspective, the reason why we made such a quick decision on um, employing Tony <laughs> at the time was number one, because we'd realized that in order to be able to offer the best possible relationship between the lenders and ourselves, because we were doing a lot of the work in the, you know, as intermediaries between mm. what our clients needed and the lenders, the ability to be able to say, okay, we've now got, um, Tony and Tony can negotiate the things that we know need to happen because most people are not simple lend situations. Like, I don't think that even if you are a first home buyer or whatever, there's still things that people don't know the answer to, which we've Absolutely. come to understand as well as we've moved along in uh, our finance division as well as, you know, our podcasts and the TikToks and stuff that we do that there's no one like, oh, I, I just earn a living and I want to go to the bank and get a mortgage. That's still not even the, the basis of it. So if I was a person walking into a bank branch and saying, can I get a home loan for, you know, this type of home, there's still going to be a thousand questions that they ask me. And yeah. I still don't know the answers to them all necessarily. Yeah. And so, and our clients in particular are not straightforward at all. Even the straightforward ones are not straightforward. Yeah. And so there's always those things. And we weren't going to be able to do that without having somebody under our own roof. And because now you and Shane, you know, there are conversations that happen daily on, you know, finance situations that yeah. we would not have been able to offer to our clients unless we had you in the building. And yeah. so that, you know, for us, um, it was a no brainer, you know, yeah. wasn't it? Because we knew. Yeah. Um, in terms of one of the things and the stigma that I think with brokers is that um, oh, you get a commission from the mm. bank and therefore you'll be influenced by who pays you the highest commission. Do you want to give a response to that one? Yeah. Um, we're not, in short, we're not allowed to do that. 
um, our files, our applications, they all get scrutinized by not only our aggregator, so the, the one that connects the dots between me and the lender, mm-hmm. but also by ASIC. Mm. Okay. And I have to defend in a statement of advice, I have to say mm. why I've recommended one lender over another and what are the benefits to the client mm-hmm. in as far as that concerns. And the, the, the commissions, well, they're paid by the lender to entry group. Mm. I get paid a salary. Mm. I'm not motivated by how much entry group earn or how mm. much I earn. It's about the solution pr- provided to the client. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if I was the sort of person that was motivated by how much commission we earned and I was commission only and I was getting all that mm. and I was always going to one particular lender, that automatically gets flagged by mm-hmm. our aggregator, yep. it automatically gets flagged by ASIC mm-hmm. and I'm out of a job. Yeah. Um, I love my job too much to, to be a cowboy. Yeah. And yep. at the end of the day, I'm not acting in the client's best interest. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, yep. yeah. And in, and just to reinforce that. So for Ancient Group Finance, you do not get paid based on commissions. Absolutely. No, you mm. are on a, on a salary. And That's I think, right. yeah. you know, for the people listening as well, thinking about from a broker perspective and this goes for brokers across the board and I'm going to defend the brokers and Shane's going to say, what are you serious? <laughs> Cause I don't normally do that. Um, I can tell you, listeners, there is no money in finance broking. (laughs) Like it is not a money-making activity and there is such a delay between um, when deals go through and the work that is involved in getting a deal through. Like Tony works for every single skerrick of that commission. That is not a – like the commissions that we get when we place a loan, that – that's not like cream on the top of something. That's just actually paying for your time getting these deals across the line. Like it's Absolutely. not, I don't think um, in any situation and finance brokers, please don't, you know, get me wrong. I don't, I think you do a heck of a job negotiating with people that have like thousands and thousands of inquiries coming through in the banking industry yeah. and being an intermediary between uh, the person who wants the finance and the bank, like that is a hard job. Like mm. I don't think, let's not, you know, think, oh yeah, everyone's running on commission and Tony's buying a yacht and stuff like that. Like nobody in finance <laughs> broking is doing that sort of stuff because, um, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, 15 hour a day job sometimes because you are talking to clients after they've finished work or, you know, whatever. It's not a nine to five thing, is it? No, no. Um, the reality is people that are earning a living are working nine to five. Mm. So you've got to be adaptable and say, yeah, well, look, yeah. if you want me to come out on Saturday morning, I'm more than happy to yeah. open the office or come mm. to the auction with you or whatever you need to do. Yeah, um, That's the understanding that we have. And and um, job satisfaction is not necessarily re- reflected in how many yachts or Maseratis I have. <laughs> um, I don't even like the word job. I like... Um, the role that I have being yeah. rewarding because I can see the benefit being delivered by yeah. Um, yeah. myself to the client yeah. and ultimately a entry group as yeah. well. And, you know, that is, I think, you know, when you joined us, I think we'd only just started our conversations as a team around our values and all of that sort mm. of stuff. And, you know, our values of being courageous custodians of our community, you embody that, those values, because what you're doing is not uh, you know, personal for personal satisfaction. You don't get up in the morning so that you can, you know, um, make a huge commission on a on a, a loan that you write. You're actually genuinely care about what the client outcome is and what the outcome is for Aintree Group as a whole as well. And yeah. I think that's why you know you, what you do and ha- who you are really resonates with Shane and I, which is you know that was the instant attraction, I guess, at the Mm. interview was that the first thing you said to us was that, you know, you were most focused on the client outcome and that you, that was your thing, you know, client is the first thing. Um, and you know, that is a really important part of what we do at Aintree Group. And I think that's why it works so well. And, you know, the team love Tony. Uh, (laughs) Now, Tony, hobbies outside of work. (laughs) What are your passions? Um, music. Mm-hmm. Obviously, um, we just recently got a little Italian greyhound puppy, so we walk out dogs. Yep, a lot. Um, he's massacred my my hands, so <laughs> I'm not showing those to anyone. Um, yeah, 
it's time with family because mm-hmm. um, you've only got one. So yeah. I spend time um, with my my wife and and my kids. And yeah. Yeah. we recently, well, not recently, it's been almost a year now, uh, we moved into the area. So we're five minutes away from the office. Yeah. My wife has not really seen this part of the world. So okay. um, let's go to Mornington. Let's go here. Let's go <laughs> yeah. there. Let's yeah. eat here. Let's eat there. So, you know exploring the local area yeah. and I like to make, um, furniture, believe it or not. Okay. Wow. So I make, um, coffee tables, uh, side tables. Why did um, we not have a Tony coffee table in the office? Um, and, and that's why you see me tightening screws on our chairs and things like that. Cause, um, I like working with my hands. Yeah. For the listeners, um, we have a whole bunch of very, very dodgy chairs that we have as visitors sort of chairs in our offices and, they are quite rickety and Tony has a calendar, yeah. in, a calendar a entry in his diary it. to check all the chairs for us. So um, definitely looking after us in that way as well. But I would like to see some of your furniture. So I think it's time that you started to like share at least some photos of, it, of that. Oh, yeah, I could yeah, do that. Yeah. Um, I and remember. Those, sorry, by the way, those chairs will be upgraded shortly. So oh, yes, those dodgy yeah, chairs. Those yeah. chairs are coming. Yeah. You, you'll be able to. Get that off your calendar soon. <laughs> I once made a uh, rosewood um, sit stand table that had expandable, um, sh- uh, like so you could make it a dining table mm. yeah, yeah. if wow, you wanted tiny. to. Um, <laughs> and we sold the um, a house in Geelong, and that was a feature part of furniture. Mm-hmm. And uh, the the purchaser said, "Can I have that as well?" And I said, "Yeah, you can have that." Uh, but the purchase price just went up five thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, no. I, I love working particularly with wood. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, that's a great little piece of information that I did not know, so thank you for sharing it. <laughs> yeah. Um, in terms of other things, so football, we'll just talk briefly about football. Oh, do we have to? No, we're talking about it based on last year, not this year. <laughs> oh, we could talk yeah, about last yeah, year. Yeah, <laughs> so great result for our football team last yeah. year. We won't talk about this year, though. Um, well, not yet. So, it's not the end of the season but still, yet. But still a passion. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, absolutely. Yes. But I live in a house of Col- um, Carlton supporters, so uh-huh. oh, that's yeah, okay, um, that's unfortunate. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And yeah. Um, fortunately, you work with Collingwood supporters, so that yeah, it's a relief. Makes up for it. I've been quiet about football at the start of this year yeah, because you know yeah, one yeah. day we'll win a match, but um, <laughs> I actually tipped against them this week. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'm quite passionate about Collingwood. Um, it's just a family thing. Yeah. Um, and and back to the music, just in terms of. Any particular genre or is it just no, across the board? any and all. Yeah. Um, I used to uh, mix for deaf metal bands. Okay. Um, in a pub in North Melbourne. So and, how you eat drums. Yeah. Um, noise and music has to be in front of me. I can't have it behind me because yep. um, that's what, what, I, yep. what I'm used to. Mm. Yeah. Um, and it depends on my mood. If I'm um, putting files together, so I'm doing a lot of data entry, it might be a little bit more pacey. But if I'm thinking of a solution, it might be a little bit more laid back. Yeah. Um, but anything and everything, um, because yeah, music's music. Yeah. You know? yeah. 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 If I was to ask you, um, if there was only one music genre that you could listen to for the rest of your life, what would you choose? Uh, 70s, uh, rock, so Led Zeppelin, mm-hmm. ACDC, mm-hmm. Yeah. like something hard. Yeah. yeah. Um, because they knew how to sing then, you know, yeah. they, they knew how to play instruments. So I'm not saying that today's artists don't, yeah. um, tip my hat to Taylor Swift and all of that sort of thing, <laughs> but I, I just don't relate to that music. Yeah. Yeah. yeah fair enough. Yeah. Fair yeah. enough. I'm old yeah. and crusty as my kids <laughs> say. So, you know, um, <laughs> I'm not sure that you're old and crusty. I don't think that that quite, that's quite, I think that's a kid thing. Yeah. Do well, they make you listen to music? Yep. Yeah, in the car or yeah. like in the house? Well, I had um, Gold 104 yep. mm-hmm. on in the car and my daughter said, why are we listening to old decrepit music? <laughs> it's not like it's Elvis or anything. It's, it's But even if it was Elvis, like, you know. I, yeah. So what it's, sort of music do they listen to, kids? Taylor? Uh, or? Oh, yeah, yeah Taylor yeah. and um, a lot of club type music. They're yeah, at that age yeah, where they're, yeah. they're going out a yeah, lot. So, yeah. um, a bit of that, a bit of gangster rap. And I mm-hmm. don't understand that because it's a lot of <laughs> expletive words in it. And yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, um, 
we always ask this question at the end, or we try and ask this question at the end. At the end, um, what do you think that you will do next? So you're not always going to be a finance broker, Tony. When you have decided to move on to the next stage of your career or life, if there was something that you could choose, what would it be? I don't think it's necessarily true that I won't be a broker for the rest of my life. Okay. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm of feeling if you love what you're doing, yeah. why would you seek mm -hmm. to change it? When I was in banking, I loved what I did. My clients loved me and all that sort of mm. thing. And when senior management identified that you've got talent, you're really good at what you do, and we see this all the time, mm. they move you on yeah. to a different role and your clients mm. are affected by that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't want to do anything else. If anything, I want to invest more into Aintree Group. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something we'll talk about when we can talk about it. Yeah, but yeah. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Great. Well, that's good to hear. So from our client perspective, that means that Angel Group Finance is, has a long, long, long time to go because we have no intention of doing anything other than that with Tony. So um, make us some furniture. <laughs> Challenge. Uh, yeah, I could. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Could. Where we, do you make it? Because like... Well, in Ballarat, I, yeah, I had... Yeah. Um, the garage never had a car and it had a workshop in it. Um, <laughs> so we've got to find you a workshop. Is that what you're telling us? Yeah, if, but we want to move want into furniture. an apartment. Yeah, uh, I sold yeah. all the all the woodworking furniture where, uh, stuff when yeah, we yeah. moved yeah. Um, down here. Yeah. Um, but it was a good way to acquire tools. Yeah. Um, the listeners out there. Um, like, I'm going to make a table, but I really need a drop saw. <laughs> yeah. But they're hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can get an Azito one. Um, yeah, no, I no, want <laughs> something a bit better than that. <laughs> oh, okay. So that's how I got all my uh, yeah, tools yeah, and equipment. Yeah. But, yeah, um, yeah I, I don't have the – I have some of the tools, but I, I yeah. don't have the space for it now. Yeah. So. so if anyone is listening out there who happens to have a woodworking workshop somewhere in sort of the Melbourne um, metro area, perhaps you give Tony a call <laughs> and uh, um, see if he can he can build some furniture in your workshop. <laughs> Thanks so much for Thanks, joining Andrew. us today, Tony. We really appreciate it. I love the fact that I now know that you made furniture and I will be asking for photos. Um, and thank you for coming along. And you listen to Tony on our Plant Grow Reap podcast. He talks about all sorts of really incredible information. So I highly recommend you listen to him. He's um, always giving his uh, knowledge to everybody. Um, so it's a really good way to get more information about banking, about finance, about first home buying. So listen in to Plant Grow Reap so that you can hear more from Tony. Thanks for Thanks, joining Adrian. us today. Thanks, Shay. Thank you. Thank you.